delivering, among other things, Javelin anti-tank missiles, Coast Guard cutters, and anti-sniper systems. Despite the recent furor over the pause in U.S. security assistance this past summer, the circumstances of which are the topic of impeachment hearings, U.S. defensive support for Ukraine has been and remains robust, and more, according to Ambassador Volker. It is therefore a tragedy for both the United States and Ukraine that U.S. partisan politics, which have culminated in the ongoing impeachment process, have left Ukraine and its new reform-minded President Vladimir Zelensky exposed and relatively isolated. The only one who benefits from this is Russian President Vladimir Putin. Those are the words of Ambassador Volker. He was one of the House manager's key witnesses. He was the very first witness to testify in the House proceedings on October 3rd. And so I think it's fitting that he may be the last witness we hear from. In his parting words, Ambassador Volker admonishes that it is U.S. partisan politics which have culminated in this impeachment process that have imperiled Ukraine. In sum, the House manager's case is not overwhelming and it is not undisputed. The House managers bear the very heavy burden of proof. They did not mean it. It's not because they didn't get the additional witnesses or documents that they failed to pursue. It's because their own witnesses have already offered substantial evidence undermining their case. And importantly, as you have heard from Professor Dershowitz and from Mr. Philbin, the first article does not support or allege an impeachable offense regardless of any additional witnesses or documents. Members of the Senate, it has been an incredible honor and privilege to speak to you in this chamber. I hope that what I've shown has been helpful to your understanding of the facts, and I respectfully ask you to vote to acquit the President of the wrongful charges against him. I yield to Mr. Philbin. Mr. Chief Justice, members of the Senate, we've heard repeatedly throughout the past week and a half or so that the President is not above the law. And I'd like to focus in my last remarks here on an equally important principle, which is that the House of Representatives also is not above the law in the way they conduct the impeachment proceedings and bring a matter here before the Senate. Because in very significant and important respects, they didn't follow the law. From the outset, they began an impeachment inquiry here without a vote from the House, and therefore without lawful authority delegated to any committees to begin an impeachment inquiry against the President of the United States. That was unprecedented in our history. The Speaker of the House does not have authority by holding a press conference to delegate the sole power of impeachment from the House to a committee. And the result was 23 totally unauthorized and invalid subpoenas were issued as a beginning of this impeachment inquiry. After that, the House violated every principle of due process and fundamental fairness in the way the hearings were conducted. And we've been through that. I'm not going to go through the details again. But it's significant because denying the president the ability to be present through counsel, to cross-examine witnesses, and to present yeah, evidence is that really fundamentally that? skewed the proceedings in the, car. in the House of Representatives. Huh? Left the president without the ability to have a fair proceeding. And it meant it reflected the fact that those proceedings were not truly designed as a search for truth. We have procedural protections. It's going down, y'all. Trump defense team is not and planned. It's a closing arguments. Thank you guys for watching. I gotta go.